Hey people, it's Sleepy Reader Damien. I had a, uh, a brief free moment and I wanted to uh, share a few of my thoughts on some more of the comics I've been reading this past week. I think I was particularly inspired by Tommy Gun Wizards. I read the first two issues of this new Dark Horse series, which is written by Christian Ward, who we know as an artist from the Inhumans and ODCY, Odyssey, and from, he's the artist on a current Dark Horse book, what's it called? I can't remember it, it's an outer space story that was a little disappointing to me. <laughs> what was that called, a something order? I don't know. Anyway, this one he's writing and the artist is named Sam Kavila. I don't know. I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce those two dots over the A. Um, so the covers are by Christian Ward. And um, then Sam Kavila has a kind of workmanlike style that works fine, you know, tells the story well. And it's colored by Christian Ward. And the coloring is very good. And then each issue has a back, a very short backup story that's not really identified. It's just called Many Moons Ago but it's very different than the main story that takes place in this alternate prohibition Chicago with um, Elliot Ness and Al Capone. But this is in on some other distant fantasy world and it is drawn and written by uh, Christian Ward. And so this, like I said, this is an alternate world where uh, there's a form of magic called the lick, which is kind of a weird name for magic. And I don't know if you lick it, but somehow you get it at speakeasies and it does various things like warm your bath water or make you more muscular or what have you. But there's much more powerful practitioners of it. And it's it's now become prohibited, illegal. And Al Capone is um, is the person who's dealing it out to the city of Chicago and Elliot Ness is out to stop him. And we find out that Al Capone has a plan to to sell the, the the lick around the country through the mobs in other cities and perhaps other countries. Uh, it's just it's really well told, really fun to read. Um, and, and overall gives you a, a feeling of a good, you know, 1920s alternate world, except I would say the characters curse like modern people do. Um, and I'm seeing this over and over again. We've hit some barrier where the F word just appears in comics everywhere. And it appears in here a lot. The mother effer appears. Um, and I just don't think they're using it the way probably people in the 1920s would. It, it kind of throws me out anyway, because we don't even use the F word now the way we did when I was a kid, where everything was F and A, man. That was what the teenagers said anyway. So... Uh, yeah, that made that jumped out at me. But otherwise, I just Christian Ward is a really good writer. And um, this is a really intriguing story. And uh, I'm surprised I, I like this better than than the uh, comic that he's not writing that he's drawing. And I, I and some people have, so, uh, I think it was uh, Devin talking about Christian Ward art not quite being there. But if you see these short pieces that he's doing, for this comic, the art is totally there. So um, maybe he has had more time to really focus and no, no rushing on the art in these uh, three or four page stories that he does at the back. So I think the the, back, the stories at the back are kind of a background story that's eventually gonna hook up with what's going on with the lick in our world. Um, very intriguing reading, very, a very cool comic. So I wanted to kind of highlight that. A one-shot comic that I really liked. I picked it up because of the artist. Uh, Brian Hitch did such a great job on Hawkman that he's kind of back in my mind as one of the top superhero, mainstream superhero artists. And he's the artist on this double-sized uh, issue of Year of the Villain, which just focuses on Lex Luthor's uh, traveling through the multiverse and meeting different versions of himself usually killing them or capturing them or doing something to them. One of them is this young boy who seems to be traveling with him. 
and there's a great kind of reveal at the end. It's just, it's a really good story. I don't think I've read anything written by Jason Latour before. I know he did, did he, did he write Spider-Gwen? <laughs> I think he did some other stuff at Marvel that I don't think I read. But, um, you know, I, I love a good multiversal story and I get sick really fast of multiverse stories too. But this one, made, I really liked it. And I have no intention of reading the whole Year of the Villain storyline. I don't really know, don't really understand what Year of the Villain is about. But I completely understood this and really enjoyed it. Black Hammer, Age of Doom. Did I already talk about this in another comic book thoughts? I now can't remember. Uh, I feel like I read it, you know, about 10 days ago, but maybe I read it long. This is a great cover. Um, this is the final story, and it wraps up kind of back where we began. And the reason for it is what bothers me. And I mentioned that, I think, when I reviewed the penultimate um, issue, that basically... Um, heroes and villains shouldn't exist and we need to get rid of them basically um and then there's balance in the the universe if i understand things correctly but i know they plan to have a lot more black hammer comics but i feel like i'm gonna take a break a break a break a break from black hammer comics maybe i'll pick them up in the future um you know, after the after various miniseries are completed, I might get them as trades or pick them up in the back issue boxes. But I think I, I'm just going to take a break from it because after traveling so long with the uh, Black Hammer main storyline to just sort of come back to where we started is a fine plot idea, but not for so many issues like if it and I imagine originally it was just planned as like a six or 12 issue story. Um, but it felt, I just got tired of it, of going so far with these characters only to just come to that conclusion. Valkyrie was literally a fun ride as we rode through different versions of hell or the afterlife with Valkyrie and Heimdale, but it didn't... <clears throat> And, and it was cool, different ones were, the art was by different people. It didn't tell me as much as I thought it would about different uh, mythologies and stuff. And it had a funny revelation at the end. A spoiler here, sorry. Uh, wait till I stop holding this comic up if you want. Um, the revealed to her that her horse can talk to her. And I felt that was a little too cute. We'll see, maybe that can make it it gives her someone to talk to, I guess, uh, make it more interesting as we go along. Um, I'm still kind of really interested where Valkyrie is going. It's got two of Marvel's very best writers co-writing it. There's a lot of interesting elements being laid out. So I anticipate even better stuff as we go forward. Um, maybe you could jump in in a few more issues. I don't know. Savage Avengers, uh, the best thing is the covers because the, now the interior art is by this artist I've never heard of who um, has a bit of a style like, oh, now I can't, I'm having more brain farts. Too many, too many comic book factoids in my head. Um, there's another artist that this artist reminded me of. But uh, it's, it was a fun read and then I almost kind of forgot what happened the moment it, it ended. But um, and this issue is kind of a bridge to whatever is going to happen next, I think. It's still kind of fun. To, I, I thought I would hate it, but it's kind of fun reading. Conan is wandering around the Marvel Universe of sorts. So that's interesting. Speaking of Conan, it, it was kind of nice that they wrapped up this Conan the Gambler story in three issues. Um, the art by um, Patch Zercher, Patrick Zercher really kicked up a notch in this issue. There was a stiffness in some of his art. I think, in a sense, he's trying really hard to evoke the Barry Smith um, style, but it doesn't quite fit with him that well. But I don't know. There's some really cool panels, but maybe overall it just felt a little stilted. It was not a major Conan story, but you don't need a major Conan story. But this one 
you know, I enjoyed it fine, but it, it, it wasn't as good. It, it wasn't as fun to read as other issues of Savage Sword of Conan. It just seemed almost rote, I guess. And Jim Zub was the writer. So I'm excited. I think the next issue or issues, I'm not sure, will be written by Roy Thomas with art by Alan Davis, if I remember correctly. So that could be really cool. Talk about really cool, but kind of forgettable <laughs> once in the future. A bunch of stuff happened in this issue, magical stuff, move the plot forward. I think I was mostly just dazzled by the art. It's still really the fun, you know, the, ooh, some gross stuff in there. Uh, the kind of average guy, except he's really handsome, with his mom, who's kind of a retired Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So yeah, this is still a really fun thing to be on. Who shot Jimmy Olsen? It's, I'm slowly being worn down by the odd way that Matt Fraction is writing this. Um, you know, as, as many of you may know, he's doing it in like two or three page pseudo stories that kind of link up throughout each issue. Um, I love the art by, um, by Lieber. Uh, I'd say Larry Lieber, but that's not it. Uh, Steve Lieber, I think. And um, this, to me, this the, each story isn't as funny as I feel like Matt Fraction thinks I should think it is. Or other people are finding it very funny. I know some of my friends love this comic. But anyway, there's enough fun bits that, um, that I'm enjoying it more and more. But there is that sense of them working really hard to make things funny. Another really fabulous issue of Freedom Fighters that continued to explore the the plight of the African Americans in this alternate Nazi world, um, which to me is remains, you know, the most powerful thing we've seen here. We've also got some intense stuff with Adolf Hitler the third and his um, his uh, torturing of some of our heroes and incredible art by Eddie Barrows. So nine issues in Freedom Fighters just keeps getting better from my point of view. I'm gonna be sad when it wraps up, although I think it's also kind of good that it, it has a limited storyline that's gonna be 12 issues and they will have to wrap things up. So that's uh, more of my thoughts these days. Um, Next week, I hope to come back with a proper comic book countdown of the Wednesday comics of that week. But for now, I'm just reading a hodgepodge of stuff, probably scattered over up to four or five weeks worth of comic book pulls. So, oh, and this shirt is, I think it's supposed to be a picture of Mobius. Um, I ordered it. I was looking online for shirts that were by Mobius, but I think I ended up with a shirt that is a drawing of Mobius and it's not it's not signed or anything but it kind of looks in the style of Jeff Darrow to me um, but it could be someone else kind of trying to ape Mobius style and ending up with a Jeff Darrow style anyway I'll talk to you all later bye bye